Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. When you imagine our collective future, what do you see? Today, most people do not envision a positive future for humanity. Our movies, our television shows, our video games and our talk shows are filled with apocalyptic themes and there is constant speculation about what is ahead of us on social media. Global events have really started to go haywire in recent months and faith in our leaders has never been lower. A lot of people are realizing that when things really start hitting the fan, nobody is going to come riding along to rescue them. So, sales of emergency food and supplies have soared to record levels, and millions of us are planning for life in a world that has gone completely and utterly mad. Even some of the most prominent voices in our society are openly talking about such things. For example, Joe Rogan has suggested that right now would be a really good time for Jesus to come back. Like if he came back now, it would be great, Rogan said. Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back, now's a good time. Now's a good time. Have you ever heard Joe Rogan talk like this? I haven't. In another recent broadcast, Joe Rogan admitted that he believes that something big is coming, and when he thinks about that, it scares him. Needless to say, he is far from alone. There are millions of others out there that are feeling the exact same way. At this point, even the wealthiest members of our society are preparing for worst-case scenarios. The following comes from a Daily Star article, entitled, Bible Prophecy is Coming True, as Claims Billionaires Build Huge Underground Bunkers. Podcaster Christina Randall claims that Zuckerberg's bunker is just the latest of around 15 doomsday shelters being built by billionaires around the world. It is definitely very interesting that they're choosing to build something that sounds like it could be fully self-sustaining, especially if something catastrophic happened to the world and it was no longer habitable, she said. Why not just build a regular old mansion or some kind of commercial facility that could generate Zuckerberg even more money? She stressed. This building is definitely not cheap, it is estimated to cost over $270 million, and it looks like this is going to be the largest private personal construction project in human history. We're talking about over a quarter of a billion dollars. The video from Christina Randall that was referenced in that article has already been watched more than 420,000 times. If everything is going to be just fine, why are so many billionaires building massive survivalist compounds? Can anyone out there answer that question? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. A very large portion of the general population is deeply concerned about what is coming as well. Billions of dollars is being spent on emergency food and supplies, and I fully expect that 2024 will shatter all previous records. In a recent Fox Business article entitled Army Vet Says Prepper Food Company Booming as More Americans Plan for Disaster in 2024, Jason Nelson explained why it is so important for people to have plenty of emergency food on hand. Americans need to consider the vulnerability of the U.S. food supply and make plans accordingly, Nelson argues. I just think a lot of people don't know where food comes from. They don't understand the distribution system. If they understood how that works, that there's about two weeks worth of food in any distribution system around the United States, once those systems start to break down, the availability of food is going to drop to near zero. And so, what people think they have in their cabinets that will help them survive, is very different than actually sitting down and doing an analysis of caloric intake for your family. What they need for not just survivability, but maybe even thrivability, he said. What he said is so true. 
Once our distribution systems break down, the stores will empty out very rapidly. When that day arrives, you will be so glad that you took action ahead of time. The same thing could be said for those that have already chosen to relocate. Over the past few years, many Americans have actually moved to a different part of the country, in anticipation of the very challenging times that are ahead of us. In a recent article, Milan Adams laid out some of the things that you might want to consider if you are thinking about making such a move. Here are some of the human factors that she considers to be important when evaluating a new location. Low population density, 40 people per square mile or less. Distance to major minor cities, 50 plus miles away. Distance to military bases, 50 plus miles away. Distance to nuclear power plants, 100 plus miles away. Distance to interstate highways. Low poverty rate. Low violent crime rate. And here are some of the natural factors that she considers to be important when evaluating a new location. Easy access to fresh water. Abundance of wild game. Low natural disaster risk. Dense forest cover. Adequate soil textures. Adequate rainfall. Low drought risk. I think that all of that is really good advice. When things start getting really crazy, you don't want to find yourself trapped in a heavily populated area. As I discussed earlier this week, social order is already breaking down all over the nation. For example, did you know that 90,000 packages a day are stolen in New York City? I was floored when I first heard that statistic. That means that there are 90,000 crimes in the Big Apple every single day. Our streets are literally teeming with predators, and many of them show absolutely no remorse for the crimes that they commit. When I was young, I thought that living in a big city was the thing to do. But now that I am much older, I am so glad that I do not live in one of our core urban areas, because they have become extremely dangerous. Over the weekend, a wild mob of young people in San Francisco viciously vandalized a Waymo autonomous vehicle and set it on fire. A Waymo autonomous vehicle was set on fire Saturday night after it was vandalized by a group of people in Chinatown, San Francisco firefighters said. The vehicle was traveling on Jackson Street between Stockton and Grant about 9.25 p.m. when it was surrounded by about 10 to 15 people, Lt. Mariano Elias with San Francisco Fire said. Several social media videos showed a group of people vandalizing the self-driving car while another video showed the Waymo vehicle going up in flames. Why did they do that? Because they could. They couldn't care less about property rights. They just saw something that they could destroy, and so they did it. If this is how they are behaving now, what will they be like when there is no food in their stomachs and they haven't eaten for two weeks? The elite definitely want to avoid such confrontations, and so that is why they plan to bug out and go to the survivalist compounds that they have been constructing for themselves. We really are on the verge of an extremely apocalyptic future, and we will soon see things happen that many people never even imagined would be possible. Millions upon millions of people have a gut feeling that really bad stuff is on the horizon, and it won't be too long before it becomes clear why so many of us have been preparing for the worst. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.